Oh, hello, this is Tak Chong from Walk with Tak. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. As you can see here, spring has arrived, and I'd like to show you what it is like in a flat landscape in central Illinois. Uh, if you have any question regarding to this video, uh, please write to me at walkwithtak at gmail.com. Uh, if you have any video that you would like me to make, uh, please let me know. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. In this video, I would like to show you how to cook a chicken and broccoli dish based on a cooking style which I refer to as a Cantonese cooking style, which is also the most common form of restaurant cooking style in the United States. Now, Cantonese cooking style has some unique properties. In fact, it has always been said the Cantonese cooking is among the very best in China. And in fact, it probably be among the very best in the world. The reason for that is that the Cantonese cooking style uh, utilizes the ingredients, uh, its freshness to be the most important property. And the end result is that it not only has the greatest nutritional value, but it also has the best flavor. And in this case, uh, the nature of the ingredient, the freshness of the ingredients is absolutely essential. So if you want to eat food that cook from scratch using all fresh ingredients, then the Cantonese cooking style is probably the best. In this video, I'm going to show you how to cook a chicken and broccoli uh, using this style, but also utilize mainly what you will find in many of the restaurants. Now, first of all, uh, the chicken has to be cooked just right in the Cantonese style. And usually you will find that in many of the restaurants that with uh, this type of cooking style, uh, the chicken is moist and tender. And quite often, the chicken are slightly fried on the surface. And this is how I achieve that. Now, also, uh, with the Cantonese cooking style, is that the vegetable has to be fresh. In this case, uh, I use a fresh green bean, and which is the best quality. Uh, but this dish, the main ingredient uh, is going to be broccoli, although the broccoli and green bean uh, almost takes equal representation in the dish. However, this dish is traditionally, when you think of it, as a broccoli stir-fried chicken. Now, the reason that my fast cooking system plays such a significant role that allow you to eat more vegetable, as well as uh, allow you to enjoy the vegetable more so than any type of approach, is you can have different kinds of vegetables. In this case, I also add some red cabbage. So the basic idea of this dish is that to use ingredients as fresh as possible. And this is possible uh, because of advanced prepping. When you use advanced prepping, it is likely uh, for you to have multiple ingredients available in your refrigerator. And through advanced prepping, you can keep them fresh. Quite often, uh, if you do not prep them in advance and you uh, purchase the ref ingredients from the supermarket and put it into the refrigerator right away without cutting them up and leave them in the original package, quite often the moisture in the package will cause them to deteriorate in quality. But if you cut them in advance and put them in plastic container and dry them out before you close it, you will be able to extend the shelf life of this ingredient significantly. So at this point, I add additional a little bit oil uh, to make sure that I have enough uh, oil uh, for this dish. And next, I'm going to add some portobello mushroom. I add the portobello mushroom at a later time point uh, because uh, uh, I use a method known as sequential stir frying. I add the food ingredients that I want to cook the least uh, toward the end of the cooking process. And this will allow me to cook all the ingredients to the texture and the thinness that I would like. Okay, now the dish is almost about 60 to 70 percent done, and the next step is to for me to season the dish. And this is the part which we, I refer to as flavor chasing. The first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to add some Shaoxing cooking wine. The cooking wine will provide great flavor, particularly for the mushroom, because mushroom can absorb the wine readily. 
and this provided the mushroom a very nice flavor which my wife really enjoyed. Now at this point you can use many different strategies how to flavor your dish. Now in Cantonese dish uh, the flavor are actually a very mild because the natural ingredients has their natural flavor which is more important. So uh, the Cantonese style also make use of uh, two sauces that is uh, Hoisin sauce as well as oyster sauce. Both of the sauces are frequently used in Cantonese cooking, and you will find the flavor is very commonly represented in many Chinese restaurants in the United States. But it is a uh, approach that is now adopted by almost all Chinese style cooking, as well as cooking in many different parts of Southeast Asia. Uh, the next thing is that I'm going to uh, add a small amount of water to the bottom of the wok. Uh, there are two reasons for that. One is that I want to create a light sauce. Another reason is that I want to use the water to remove the food ingredients that might have burned to the bottom surface of the wok. Uh, this will allow me to uh, use the wok spatula to scrape them off. And I call this method spot cleaning. It actually cleans the wok as you cook as well as return the flavor um, to the dish. Now, the final step I'm going to add is some uh, colored bell pepper. Now, this is a sweet mini pepper, and they are added to not only to add flavor to the dish, and then I'm also going to add some uh, scallion. And both of these two ingredients, I want them to cook very lightly. And again, this is part of the sequential stir frying because by using this method, I can control how long and how much I want to cook them. So as you can see, this dish is very fast to cook. In fact, the cook time is only about six to seven minutes. And the end result is that you can walk into the kitchen and have a meal ready on the table in less than 20 minutes. However, in order for this to take place, now you remember that in my fast cooking system, I have four components, that is flavor chasing, advanced prepping, stir frying, and template based cooking. And the reason that I choose stir frying as the cooking method is because of efficiency. Stir frying is probably one of the most efficient cooking methods. It's able to cook most of the dishes in only about five to seven minutes, as shown in this particular case. However, the benefit of stir frying uh, only will become realized that if the ingredients are already prepped in advance. And this is the reason why advanced prepping takes a essential role. And together with tempeh based cooking, as well as flavor chasing, uh, it will allow you to cook your dish in such a way that provide you with almost infinite possibilities and variations. The fast cooking system has many benefits in addition to its efficiency. Uh, the speed allows you to put a meal on the table uh, in less than 20 minutes. But furthermore, the fast cooking system also allows you to cook the food exactly how you like it to provide you with the nutritional benefit that you want uh, because of its ability to cook food that from scratch using all fresh ingredients. However, the, the fast cooking system also has other benefits. One is that it allows you to create many variations using template based cooking, so you will never get bored of what you cook. And together with flavor chasing, uh, you will be able to cook the dish exactly the flavor how you like it. And once you achieve that, you will not want anybody else to cook for you uh, because they do not know how you like it. So with the basic skill uh, with the fast cooking system, this is what makes home cooking sustainable as well as creative and fun. I post a video each day to help you to make home cooking as part of your daily routine. And if you'd like to learn more about this cooking system, uh, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. So keep on cooking and I will see you tomorrow.